Hello, this is Paul Isaacs. This is the Autism Information Channel. This is my 11th video and this will be Autism Coexisting with Speech Apraxia, also known as Verbal Dyspraxia. Now, during my early development, which I've dis mentioned on a previous video, I mentioned speech delay and I'm going to go into a bit more depth about that speech delay and what I can remember of it and when my speech started to develop, which was late. Um, so when I was younger, the, the, the obvious two developmental delays were my transition from crawling to walking and my speech. And this was noticed by my parents, in particular my mum, and one of the first words I said was was nan um, repeatedly, but there was no meaning there, so it's more like a sound rather than me associating it with any meaning. So it was like the analogy I give is like an individual listening to a dog bark who's got no knowledge of dog behaviour or why dogs bark or what different sounds or barks mean and it it's basically just a sound it's like hearing a sound with no meaning and that was the first indication <laughs> that there was something wrong with my speech because I used to say this word nan or sound from my perspective over and over again now when I got into preschool and primary school there, there weren't clear developmental milestones in my speech. I can remember from the years one to three um, class years that there was, there was no, um, there was no sort of clear developmental sort of pathway. There was, I wasn't the little professor that the person with Asperger's would be where the semantics and pragmatics may not be there but there's there's a fluency to their speech and and there wasn't with me there was problems with my speech and it wasn't until about the ages of seven or eight that my speech began to take a developmental milestone but before that there were there were significant problems echolalia or delayed echolalia which i had um, along with echopraxia which was very much ingrained in my interest that was sort of my route sort of speech it was copying rather than having any speech with any sort of acquired meaning the thing that happened later during my early teens, ironically when my speech did start to develop was I got in s sort of situations of great intensity, I sort of revert back, I become selectively mute in very stressful situations but I've overcome that and I know a lot of people with the high functioning autism who have speech delay and autism who get the diagnosis of have autism who have speech delay overcome it and um, you know develop uh, eventually and if and there's always different pathways of communication other than verbal which help others also so I hope this video helps and I hope it clearly explains that, that speech delay is, is is an ongoing thing it's not just a delay in one point of time it's also to do with from that point in time so 18 months but are there other it's like a domino effect there's other delays there's there's delays that go on for quite a long period of time which I've exemplified so it wasn't from seven or eight that actually my speech started to develop in a more typical fashion but before then it was a lot of echolalia and 
with echopraxia and it was somewhat juvenile and underdeveloped in, in quality so that's my story thank you for listening